We've all felt left out. And for people who move to this country, that feeling lasts more than a moment. We can change that. Learn how at belongingbeginswithus.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council. NFL fans, nothing compares to being there live. What a play! Now the crowd is alive. And the NFL's biggest season ever is now ready for the postseason. It's playoff time. We got to win. NFL playoff tickets are on sale now. Don't miss your chance to be a part of the postseason action on the road to Super Bowl 56. Visit NFL.com slash tickets for a complete listing of games. That's NFL.com slash tickets. Can't get enough football? Look no further than the Good Morning Football podcast. Join me, Kay Adams, alongside Peter Schrager and Kyle Brandt for a daily breakdown of the league's biggest stories. We do it all. We talk the personalities. We talk the game plans. We got fantasy tips. We got you covered for all your football needs. Yeah, and we got recaps. We do the retweets. And we give you all the reactions to the wild moments that you might have missed on and off the field. Listen to the Good Morning Football podcast weekdays on the iHeartRadio app, on Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. The Favorites Podcast is presented by FanDuel Sportsbook. There's no better place to bet the action than on FanDuel Sportsbook during the football season. They're America's number one sportsbook with an easy-to-use app that's safe and secure. And when I win, I get paid out in as little as two hours. And this season, FanDuel Sportsbook is making betting easy for everyone. With great promos like risk-free bets, enhanced odds markets, same-game parlays, and more. So if you're new, just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app to get started and sign up with promo code FAVORITES so they know I sent you. You must be 21 or older and present in Arizona, Colorado, Connecticut, Indiana, Michigan, New Jersey, Tennessee, Virginia, or West Virginia. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text Next step to 53342 in Arizona, 1-888-789-7777, or visit ccpg.org slash chat in Connecticut, 1-800-GAMBLER, or visit fanduel.com slash RG in Colorado, Indiana, New Jersey, Virginia, 1-800-270-7117 for confidential help in Michigan. Call the Tennessee Red Line at 1-800-889-9789, or visit 1-800-GAMBLER.net in West Virginia. Welcome to The Favorites, the podcast from the Volume Podcast Network. I am Chad Moman, Chief Content Officer of the Action Network. It is Tuesday. We are heading into the divisional round of the NFL playoffs. A lot of people would say this is the best sports weekend of the year. You get two amazing games on Saturday, two amazing games on Sunday. Uh, It is truly a remarkable experience to just bathe in all that football excellence. I am joined, as always, by my BFF, my companion, my compadre, professional better, Simon Hunter. Thank God we won money this weekend, Chad, because as an Eagles fan, Holy shit, did that (laughs) that weekend kind of suck. But what did you tell me? What did you tell me the other day? I'm like, I just don't like the Eagles in this game. And when that game got down to seven and a half and seven, I'm like, it's even worse. I don't know why we would even discuss it. You're like, bet the courage of your convictions. So it was a very interesting weekend. We have a lot to discuss and we're going to get to a lot on the show. We're going to talk about all four games. It's not like we're going to narrow down. Like we love everything on the board. We're going to have a conversation about everything on the board. We will narrow down like, from sides and totals, what our five faves are going to be. And we'll dig in a little bit deeper on Thursday and get, get down to those. Reminder, download the Action Network app. It's free. It's award-winning. You can track everything we're doing. You can track what we're going to ultimately pick in the Faves 5 handle in the Action Network. Just follow it. Look for the Faves 5. We're three and two this past week. Woo. Lost on the Eagles and the Patriots. We won on the Niners. Bengals and the Chiefs. We did exactly what we do every year. We're just a three and two podcast. Yeah, we live the dream. By the way, that's why I mean you are living on the beach, retired somewhere. Honest to God. <laughs> Somehow we always just get there. That is the people, total dream. People don't understand. That is literally the dream. You can quit your day job right now if you can just go three and two every weekend. We've talked about this a lot on the podcast. There are very few things I admire more or lend more credence to 
than people whose success comes from the grind, right? The people who like they're doing the work, they're succeeding because of the quality of that work and they're consistent. And sometimes it's sexy. Sometimes it's not. I'm not saying I don't admire or respect the people who blow up and are supernovas. I think that's awesome too. But for me, and this goes to like how we build our team, to the people we hire, to the company we're building. Like, I just like people who fucking grind and are winners from that in every aspect. I love the fucking grind. But speaking of the grind, can we just get right into it? I'm, I'm dying to hear from our guy, Matt Mitchell. I just, I got, we keep saying we got to save it for the show. Matt Mitchell had the greatest, let me set it up. Matt Mitchell yeah, had the greatest 48 hours of his life. As we know, Matt's a huge Bills fan very specifically set up a wonderful evening for himself. Matt is a huge anti Cliff Kingsbury. One of the best videos we've done a couple of years ago was Matt Mitchell just going off on Cliff Kingsbury. He retweeted it this morning. Matt, I need you to set every detail of the scene because you and I talked about it the other day. I think people are really going to enjoy it. Well, as you know, I've got two small children. I've got a four and a half year old and a 22 month old that dominate every aspect of my personal and professional life. But the Bills got to play a prime time playoff game, very rare, got very excited. So I set up a whole kind of sexy evening for myself and party of one, got the Labatt Blues chilling in a snowbank outside where they start forming the ice crystals. I went out and got 25, the largest wings in the city of Milwaukee, got the game ready to go, got the kids down just before kickoff. I sit down, get the little TV tray, like a 50 sitcom. And I took out the box of surgical gloves that I took from my daughter's uh, delivery room, uh, which was born. I put on the gloves like a serial killer. I ate every single one of those wings. I drank every single one of those beers. And I watched the NFL's first perfect game unfold. It was almost pornographic, the nature of that beatdown. The Bills doing every single thing that they wanted to do. I told my wife, I might never eat wings or drink a Labatt again, because I'll just be chasing the high of that experience. I'm so jaded and black and hollowed out inside that I can't imagine the Bills winning a Super Bowl. So right now, I don't know how it gets a lot better than that, short of winning a Super Bowl. That's a, a memory that will stay warm in my heart forever. My favorite part of that story is the surgical gloves. Saucy foods stay in my fingers forever. Even if I wash my hands, I can never seem to get the smell out, which just drives me crazy, crazy from hunger. I started wearing gloves a little while ago to try to just kind of save a couple steps. Plus, then I, I don't get my gross hands all over the furniture. And then when you're done, you just kind of unsnap them, pretending you just finished taking a gallbladder out. And uh, boom, you throw it away. There, there goes all your problems. As someone that did bet on the Patriots like an idiot, like Matt just said, it's arguably one of the best performances we ever see. It. Like, to me, the only other one I can think of that tops it is the Mahomes comeback against Houston. They were down 21 nothing. He put up 20, 21 points, and I don't even think – I think it was th less than three minutes. So the fact that Josh Allen did that to Belichick, I think is just – that's even more of a reason that the Bills fans were just losing their minds because we all agree he's the greatest coach ever, and his specialty is defense. And Josh Allen was playing at that high of a level. It did not matter what they were throwing at him, what, what kind of blitz package, what kind of zone they were running. That was um, that was incredible. And now let's get to the second part, Matt, the best part. Cliff. I would consider myself one of, you know, the leading researchers. I'm on the cutting edge of hating Cliff Kingsbury. Have for years as a big college football gambler. I love, love and deeply respect Cliff Kingsbury as a player. I'm old enough to have played in a college football fantasy league in which Cliff Kingsbury, the quarterback, won it for me. I think that was 02. But as a coach, he's just been all sizzle, no stake, took over at Texas Tech. He's great at finding college quarterbacks. He just can't do anything with them. But he's the one that gave America Baker Mayfield. He had Patrick Mahomes. Like, he was good at finding these guys and then just doing nothing with them. And he'd always end his seasons sliding into the abyss and it seems like nobody was noticing this. He left Texas Tech worse than he found it and gets fired. The Arizona Cardinals say, this is just the kind of guy we need. <laughs> they, they bring him in, and all he's done is exactly what he's always done. It's ending every season once he's, you know, people have film on him, other teams adjust. He's incapable of adjusting. I've done this rant a million times, but after Halloween every year, bet against Cliff Kingsbury. 
uh, because it's there's no there's no season since 2013 in which he has not done it. Does it every single year with no exceptions. And to uh, to have been able to fade him this entire second half has been so much fun. And then just topping it off with warning everybody that this is going to happen. And then he just he has one of I go from the Bills, one of the best offenses performances of NFL history to one of the worst playoff performances in terms of yards per play, I believe, ever in the NFL postseason. It just doesn't get any better than that. It's so interesting because I do think there is a little bit to unpack here that if we if we pull back the lens and look at 60,000 feet, the Rams Cardinals game and the Bengals Raiders game bookended two interesting trends. Simon, you and I were both on the opposite side of, and we stuck to our convictions, short underdogs in the NFL playoffs over the past five years have won at like a 60% clip. So the money moved on the Raiders from five and a half down to four and a half. The money moved on the Rams from four, on the Cardinals from four and a half down to three and a half. You and I love the Bengals. You and I liked the Rams. We didn't really love either side in the Rams Cardinals, but we liked the Rams a little bit more. Uh, even though every metric said, take the Cardinals. A lot of it is because of Cliff Kingsbury. Like we just think the guy's a joke of a coach and did not see a way in which he was going to be able to execute. Um, it's also why we bet James Conner anytime touchdown, because that seemed like this out of everything, forget about the sides that just seemed like the safest total. And again, I, I don't want to put myself out there. I'm not a huge donation guy. Again, I'll donate to charities, but I don't trust charities because who knows what these people do with the money, but the charities I do trust that do donate to that James Conner money. I donated it that they literally got one touchdown in that game. Didn't deserve that win. Didn't deserve that money. The main reason I picked it, though, is I was on the Rams. I just, like you just said, I, I believe in the Rams, but it was Stafford. That's my whole pause. The guy, what do you do, 13 of 17 completions? Like, they were good, big completions. He played well, but, I mean, we can dive into it. That Arizona game, like you just said, that's, that's Cliff. What they have, I think it was, like, minus one yards in the first half. Something bizarre like that. Odell Beckham was out passing Kyler Murray midway through the third quarter. It, it was just a very bizarre game. Is that what it was? I remember my kid said it to me because when James Conner scored, I said to my kid, I'm going to bed. And he <laughs> goes, Odell Beckham has more passing yards right now than Kyler Murray. Insane. So, yeah, like, thank God for Matt Mitchell. When we, what was it, 2019, Matt? You, like, you, you brought this to my attention at least because you knew him from college. I didn't really know shit about him. Like, I knew he produced these college quarterbacks that were studs, but he never won anything. I mean, that trend... What what burned us this year? We I think I faded them in the Bears game. I lost. Faded them the next week. I won. Faded them against Dallas. Lost because apparently Dallas are frauds too. And every week since then, we faded them against Seattle. We faded them like this past week. That trend. It's it's hard to knock it at this point. It's been multiple multiple years of this guy falling apart. So Arizona, I don't know what they're gonna do, but I, I wouldn't want this guy coaching my team. He just continuously falls apart. It's really interesting. So I mentioned the Bengals. I mentioned the Rams. Uh, we were on the wrong side of the Patriots, but the wise guys moved the lines on the Raiders as dogs, on the Eagles as dogs, on the Niners as dogs, on the Cardinals as dogs, on the Steelers as dogs. You and I love the Chiefs. We like the Rams. We love the Bengals. Uh, the I like the Bucks. I liked the Bucks, and we both liked the Niners. I mean, I, I know multiple groups, but one in particular that went one and five, they got absolutely crushed this past weekend. They got crushed on that Eagles game. They got crushed on Pittsburgh, and then they got crushed last night in the Cardinals. So, again, pros lose, but more often than not, that's what people were saying, like, aren't you scared of this different line movement? And it's like, you know, you can talk – we can talk all the shit we want about that Eagles pick. They were a touchdown and a two-point conversion away from covering that eight and a half somehow after being down 31 to nothing. So it's like, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't always work out, but it's, that's what I do. I play a system where, yeah, if I could build a model that predicts Jalen Hurts throwing red zone interceptions, probably wouldn't be betting the Eagles. That's, that's a big <laughs> deal, but I can't. I just have to take the information I have in hand and try to make the best number out of it. So, again, that Cowboys game, like if they would have won – by a point, that's when I made the line. I made the, the Cowboys minus one. So they had a chance to do that. It didn't work out. I look like a genius because I took the 49ers when it's simply 
I just thought there was better value on the 49ers. It wasn't that I thought that they were going to actually win the game. So it's it's good for our futures. Again, we, we gave out 49ers 20 to 1. They're down to 10 to 1 playing Green Bay. Again, we'll, we'll dive into that coming slate. But this past weekend was kind of awesome where – and kind of lucky that we went against what we usually do. We love taking dogs, Chad, and we didn't. Yeah. Went 4 and 2 or uh, 3 and 2 on the show. So it's like – we adjust. We don't always take the dogs. It's just I just prefer the dogs because I always think there's more value. My system doesn't skew that way. During the playoffs, we talked about it, I skew more towards the favorites just because home field is such a big deal. What do we see? Home field advantage. Teams went five and one at home. The only win on the road was the underdog we gave out on the money line, the 49ers. As much as I admire professionalism and people that grind, I also love people who are intellectually flexible, meaning you don't just say it's going to be this way and this is the way it's going to be. You look at everything, you adjust to the entirety of the landscape and you make your decision based on that. It's playoffs, different season. We don't just blindly, like as much as I love to fade the public, we don't just blindly do that. You can't, that's not sustainable. When it matches up by numbers, me and Chad talk all the time, we like it because usually we're getting a point or two of value when we're fading the public. Playoffs, the books are pretty smart. They don't really give away that much value. Like, that's why that Tampa Bay movement was so surprising where I don't have the kind of money to move a line like that. My group doesn't move lines like that. That's, that's a big time, multiple groups moving that Eagles number. Again, the money and the bets were coming in on Tampa. And we talk all the time, a $20,000 bet from a sharp is way different than $2 million of public money. Like the books won't move a number off 2 million public bets. A pro they trust comes in, he bets 20 K and then it hits him again for another you know, 15, another 20 K an hour later, they moved at a whole point and a half. So crazy movement. That's, that's, what's so fun about these playoff lines is like, we're talking this upcoming schedule. There's not going to be too much movement this week. Like there was last week. These are, these are a bunch of key numbers. We're going to be talking about upcoming these numbers. So to me, it's going to be not as volatile, but still trust your gut. I'm going to be giving you info. I'll be giving you what guys we believe in and what teams we believe in. Chad trusted his gut on the Buccaneers worked out for the guy. That was, that was a smart move by him. I got sucked in. So that's the biggest thing. Take all the info, all the different shows you listen to and try to make your own judgment because it is it's the playoffs. It's like that 49ers game is a perfect example. It's all going perfect. And all of a sudden shit just hits the fan. Teams start feeling the pressure and they just start doing dumb shit. So that's what I try to get to people. Just trust your gut. I mean, it's all going to it's all a little bit of chaos come the playoffs. All right. Enough talk. Um, we're going to get to the games. But first, a quick commercial break. Each win means that much more in the NFL playoffs. That's why FanDuel Sportsbook is hooking new customers up with 30 to 1 enhanced odds for the divisional playoffs. Bet $5 to win $150 on any team to win any divisional playoff game. This week, I like the Kansas City Chiefs to beat the Buffalo Bills at home, and I like Josh Allen rushing yards over. So just sign up for FanDuel Sportsbook and make a deposit to claim your 30 to 1 enhanced odds. And America's number one sportsbook is now live in New York. The FanDuel Sportsbook app is simple and easy to use with great promos and it's got best in class customer service. And when you win, FanDuel will pay you your winnings in as little as two hours. Already have FanDuel Sportsbook? FanDuel is hooking all customers up with $50 when you refer a friend. Plus, your friend will get $50 too. Don't miss your chance to win $150 off a $5 bet when you use promo code favorites when signing up. Download the FanDuel Sportsbook app using promo code favorites and pick your team before kickoff. Must be 21 and over and present in Arizona, Colorado, Connecticut, Indiana, Michigan, New Jersey, New York, Tennessee, Virginia, or West Virginia. Bonus issued as non-withdrawable site credit that expires in seven days. Max bonus $10. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Same game probably available for multiple sports in all states on mobile and web. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text Next Step to 53342 in Arizona. 1-800-GAMBLER or visit fanduel.com slash RG in Colorado. Indiana, New Jersey, and Virginia, 1-888-789-7777, or visit ccpg.org slash chat in Connecticut, 1-800-270-7117 for confidential help in Michigan, 1-877-8-HOPE-NY, or text HOPE-NY to 
NY in New York. Call the Tennessee Red Line 1-800-889-9789 or visit 1-800-GAMBLER.net in West Virginia. Hi, I'm Sam Rappaport, host of Earning It, a new podcast featuring women breaking the NFL's grass ceilings from the field to the front office. I'm a former professional quarterback who dreamed of creating a pipeline to bring smart football minds into the game. I went said to Darcy and said, look, I'd like to hire two coaches who happen to be female. She said, heck yeah, go for it. It's not like I'm doing this to bust up the good old boys club. They just happen to be women. When you're looking to hire the best people, maybe if you're opening up the pool to everybody, you're getting even more exceptional people. This story will be told by NFL head coaches, owners, and of course, the women themselves. And we'll even go deep with Commissioner Roger Goodell. Jane emailed the whole iHeart team being like, Sam wants to know if she could curse. I'm like, (laughs) I'm a football player. I didn't curse once, did I? Listen to Earning It, the NFL's forward progress on the iHeart Radio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Look through your children's eyes to see the true magic of a forest. It's a storybook world for them. You look and see a tree. They see the wrinkled face of a wizard with arms outstretched to the sky. They see treasure and pebbles. They see a windy path that could lead to adventure. And they see you, their fearless guide through this fascinating world. Find a forest near you and start exploring at discovertheforest.org. Brought to you by the United States Forest Service and the Ad Council. You know the final score. Now listen to the NFL podcast that tells you why it happened. Dan Orlovsky, Scott Pioli, and me, Bob Oshusen. We're tape heads going inside the coaching tape and giving fans the answers. I always say this, Bob. Don't talk to me about quarterbacks and say that you can make all the throws. Make the right one at the right time. That's something that he does really well. Regardless of what the hierarchy is, folks in the personnel department, including the general manager, need to be servants to the head coach. Well, here's the question I want to ask. Why do you all lie to us and tell us that these rookies aren't going to play? Do they have a skill or trait that is going to allow them to survive? Bob's going to bring me back to my good years at the Jets. Yeah. Were there some? Heck yeah. Come on. AFC Championship. I also believe this closes the gap between them and, you know, those other top tier teams in the AFC, Cleveland, Kansas City, and Buffalo. Listen to Tapeheads on the iHeartRadio app, on Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. All right, let's get to the games. Divisional weekend. First game. Cincinnati Bengals at Tennessee Titans. Dude, Joe, Joe Burrow was so fucking cool. I love that guy. They're three and a half point underdogs on the road at the number one seeded Tennessee Titans. Um, the total in this game is about 47. Um, we will talk about both. My first instinct on this, I don't have one. Huh. I would say my gut would always say to me, take Cincy in the points. You're getting three and a half on a dog. Very competitive offense. Who does Tennessee really have to make these stops on the defense against this kind of high-powered offense of the Bengals? But luckily, we have numbers and data, and you can dive into this stuff. As a better, I'm always looking for a little bit of advantage. And where I find my advantage is always on the D-line and the offensive line. It's a place that's not sexy. People don't care about it. But to me, it's one of the most important areas of football, and I can I find a lot of value in that position. Looking at this game, since he just lost their number one run defender at the middle on their D-tackle. So when I look at this game, and I throw the numbers in. People get bored by the numbers. That's why I, I try not to talk about numbers too much because some of it doesn't even make sense. And you can make any number sound the way you want it to to make whatever point you're trying to make sound right. But this is a big deal. This guy is their number one run stuffer, and he is worth 1.7 yards per game to that defense. That means every time now Derrick Henry is getting the ball, he's going to be getting an extra one and a half yards per carry. This guy already averages four yards to five yards per carry, Derrick Henry. So now you're telling me this guy's going to average six yards per carry in this matchup. When I first saw this number, I really didn't get it because I thought it should just be three. Yeah. Once I started diving into it, holy shit, there's a big advantage for this Tennessee team. So that's why I'm hearing professionals. I'm seeing the pro money come in on Tennessee early right now. It's going to bounce out a little bit because I know the public will come on Joe Burrow because they're like Chad. They like Joe. Joe's a cool dude. He, what is it, 31 years, first win Cincinnati. Coach is going around to the different bars, giving out game balls and shit. It's like – Awesome story. That's their Super Bowl. I'm happy for you, Cincinnati, but you're, you're going up against just a, a, a perfect storm here in a Tennessee team that is just pru- just a true bruiser team that they're not going to let Tannehill 
fuck this up for them. They're going to rely on Derrick Henry, fresh legs. They've rested him for this whole point. It's just, it's bad luck for the Cincinnati team running into them because against the Bills or the Chiefs, I could see this offense kind of going toe-to-toe, not with this kind of style that Tennessee plays. Tennessee just wears out your defense. They ball control. If Joe Burrow has one or two three and outs, it's over for Cincy. So I made this number four. I still think you're getting a good number if it hits four for Tennessee. I would take a three and a half, but I'm cool with people waiting. You can you can wait and get the three, but I don't know what the public's going to do with this number. But I can tell you professionals are going to take Tennessee in this spot. Yeah, well, that that's what I was confused about, to be honest, because I saw the three and a half, and I'm thinking to myself, there's no way the sports books would post this as three and a half unless they really, really felt good about the Titans because they know that the public is going to come in and want to take the Bengals. Um, and it, it, they will, I think, eventually on the half point. Right now, the money is on the Titans. The bets are on the Titans. But the discrepancy between the money and the bets is very large, meaning 83% of the money is on the Titans, 65% of the bets. And that's just because they opened it at two and a half. Like they, they hung a bad line with Tennessee and they just got bet up real quick. Again, it's a soft open when they give out those lines. Like they're not going to take 20, 30 K bets on that. They're going to maybe take at the top 10 K, but that's probably why you're seeing the money discrepancy. Just because we talk all the time, the public usually doesn't bet till Saturday night, Sunday morning. That's usually when they come in. So that makes sense that so much money's come in early on in Tennessee. Larry Ogunjobi. That's the defensive tackle who's out yeah if i don't try to pronounce a name there's a there's a reason thank you chad because uh, I, I i saw this <laughs> too, and i was just like maybe i can just get away with telling about talking about the best d tackle but yeah he, he's seriously he's one of the most important players to that since he defense but no one cares because it's a d tackle so people don't even know anything about this guy i'm telling you to that run defense he is huge to this this Bengals team do we think there's a shot this line moves down that's what I'm hoping. Like, again, I, I took the two and a half. I took the three. I took the three and a half just in case it does go up to four, which is what I make this game. But I, I do think the public will come in. It's just they love Joe Burrow. They love what they've seen from this offense. And no one trusts Tennessee. There's a reason Tennessee is plus 850. People just don't trust them. They're, that Their Super Bowl future is plus 850. No one just trusts the Tennessee Titans. So that's why I'm shocked this wasn't three. I assume they would make this game three. The fact that they opened at two and a half and then shot up to three and a half just shows you that they might've hung a bad line. They should have just opened it at three. So we'll see. It could get the four, but I don't mind taking a three and a half because it is a key number. Here's another question that I think people would be interested to know. Do you think people should increase their uh, wager size, their unit size in the playoffs when there are potentially fewer bets to make? If you're not an avid props player and things like that, you're basically just betting sides. Yeah. I mean, I'm all about small volume though. Like I, I make sure I might make whatever hundreds of bets in a weekend, but in actuality, it's like, you know, four five, so many weekends, even two, just really large bets. And then a bunch of other small bets just because I'm playing off the numbers. So what my advice to people would be is like, yeah, if you really think you have a good read on it, I'm, I'm all about up in the units, but if you're only making three bets, yeah, you should be betting more than some that's making 15 different bets or doing their crazy, all their different parlays all weekend. It's like, if you're just betting straight, I always tell people to up it. It's like, if I go to casino, I'm doing a fun parlay of six teams. I might throw 25, 30 bucks on that. If I'm making a, a serious bet on one side, it's like a couple thousand. So that there's definitely a difference where it's like, you're mitigating your risk and how much you wager. So um, yeah, I don't, I don't want to tell people how much money to bet, but I would say, if, if you're having a good run, like to start the playoffs, keep trusting your gut. Usually if you start good in the playoffs, it's going to keep rolling because you have a good read on this field and the different teams. So yeah, if you're comfortable with it, oh, of course, up your, up your betting percentage. Um, I, I would never tell people to bet less in the playoffs because the playoffs is kind of, it's easier. You're just more focused on a little more sample. So now there's not mm-hmm. as many games to get distracted by, but someone like me, the regular season's easier. It's like, I find better value when there's 16 games rather than this weekend when there's four. So it is different for every person. San Francisco 49ers at Green Bay Packers. The line opened to four and a half. It's up to six. We saw Fred Warner injured at the end of that Cowboys game. We saw um, Bosa injured in that Cowboys game. I'm a little surprised it's moved that much. And I wonder if that's because people are sort of waiting on the news. We're seeing right now 
the money is on the Niners and the bets are on the Packers. And I would favor the Niners here. Of course. And that was the, that was my first instinct to look at that and said, perfect. This was our dream scenario a little bit where we talked about taking this 49ers team because they're so good at running the ball. Green Bay is one of the worst run teams in all football. And then, you know, if God willing, if we can get lucky, the Rams, they would upset Tampa Bay. That's a great path for this 49ers team. Now they're going to play at SoFi against the Rams, a trip to make another Super Bowl. Shanahan, who's owned McVay, it, it all just set up for this 49er team. And, like, I knew making that bet on the Super Bowl future, this was the most likely thing. Like, no other team was going to have an upset except maybe the 49ers. They'd have to play Green Bay. To me, there's a lot of whispers, Chad, that I'm hearing about Jimmy G being hurt, that he might have a shoulder injury and he might not be playing in this game. And that's why that number is up to six now. And I don't want to bet it. I don't want to risk it taking uh, the 49ers side yet because I am on the 49ers, obviously. I believe in this team coming to the playoffs. I love this matchup for them. What's going on with Jimmy? Because that's why I think this line's moving. It's I I feel like we already know is going to be back. Bosa has concussion. If this was regular season, I don't think Bosa plays. But because it's playoffs, they're going to find a way. Like we joke all the time, playoffs, it's just different. Anyone hear of any COVID tests this past weekend or anyone testing positive? No. It's Isn't just, that amazing, by the way? Yes. Like, it's the playoffs. So, I think Bosa will be back. I saw Fred tweeted out that he was good. Like, he would be back for the next game. He was jumping and celebrating on the sideline when they won. It, like, I don't know what his ankle injury was. He looked all right. Again, that could have been adrenaline or whatever it was. But those two I'm not worried about. It's the Jimmy G factor. If, if Jimmy's really out, I love Trey Lance. This is like – Kaepernick 2.0. We saw what Kaepernick did to this Green Bay team. It was like historical how good he was against Green Bay. We ran for like 200 yards, but he's a rookie and he's making a start in Lambeau in the playoffs. I I can't risk it. So I, I can't bet this number. If anything, if you're worried about what I'm saying, maybe take Green Bay. I'm just not going to do it because I want to bet. I want to bet the 49ers. I'm going to hope these rumors are bullshit and that Jimmy's fine. And everyone's hurt at this point of the year, right? Like, who is not hurt? That's the whole old saying with football. Once you make the playoffs, everyone's hurt. So I, I, I'm I'm going to bet, obviously, the 49ers. And I just put a lid on the, the money line right now, just in case the Jimmy News is BS. And all of a sudden, this line drops back down to four and a half. Because that makes more sense. I made this line three and a half, three. Four and a half, for what the public is going to do with Green Bay, that's the fair number. Green Bay, every every reason in the world they're going to they're gonna bet on – the public's looking at this every reason to bet on Green Bay. They're rested. They have the MVP. They, they just assume, you know, Jimmy G, he doesn't play in cold. He's never played in cold temperatures like that before. How is that going to affect him? It's it's pretty easy bet for the public on this one. So I'm not surprised at all it's moved up to what it is just because they're going to protect. The books are going to protect against this Jimmy G move. If, if he is out, this number is probably going to go up to eight and a half, seven and a half. I would say to people, I'm not betting the Green Bay, but if you want to believe in that news, this is the time to take Green Bay. And you can buy out later on if you want to. This is a really tricky game for me. When I saw this game open, I immediately thought the value is on Green Bay because what San Francisco had just done, they're going to get a little bit of a bounce. And then it got up to six. And I'm like, well, that's that's too many fucking points. I mean, this is a great spot for Shanahan. Shanahan is really good on the road as an underdog. And he's owned the 49. I mean, he's owned Green Bay. Like, Rodgers, was it this year or last year? Him When he beat them, he had one of the most incredible drives slash passes to upset a 49ers team that just wasn't good or healthy at the time. This is just a total animal. We saw last week the, the 49ers, when they're going, when, they're, when their pass rush is on you and their offense is running the ball like they are, that's why we talk about it. It's so crazy. They were 20 to one and win the Super Bowl. They're one of the best teams in football, no doubt. So yeah, I, I'm I'm right there with you, Chad. That's why I, there has to be something going on with Jimmy. This number at six is insane. Pros are gonna bet this number every time. We talk all the time about how keen of a number six is at this point. Uh, it has to be something with Jimmy. That's 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 what I'm gonna go off the rumors, everything I'm hearing has to be something with Jimmy. So if we see tomorrow, Thursday, Jimmy's practicing, he's all good. Get in on get on 49ers. If he misses practice today, tomorrow, and the next day, yeah, we're, we're probably going to end up on that Green Bay number. What do you think of the total? 47 and a half. Again, it comes down to Jimmy. My first thought was, though, take the under. If 
if the 49ers are going to win this matchup, it's the same way they just dominated Cal- the Cowboys. You have to ball control, keep the offense off the field so they never get a rhythm. I mean, Dak had seven points heading into that fourth quarter. Like, that's how they kind of beat them. They just never let them get into a rhythm to establish that offense. That's the only way you beat Rodgers. You have to get them off rhythm and run the ball. We saw that with uh, the Saints. What was that, first game of the year? That's all the Saints did. They just got him at a rhythm. He was just never got comfortable in that game. That's how teams have to beat Rodgers. You just have to keep them off the field and out of rhythm. So at this point, I lean towards the under just because that favors my, my pick in the 49ers. Los Angeles Rams at Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The Buccaneers. They are three-point favorites. I am not a buyer on this Rams team at all. Peyton Manning was interesting last night. He said, you win that first playoff game and the next week feels so much better because no one's asking you, when are you going to win your first playoff game? But to me, the flip side is that the Bucs don't even, because they have Brady, because they have Gronkowski, playoffs or not, it's like, this is a regular game for them. And they're a very, very short favorite at home as a team that has an offense that is just as explosive. And a coaching staff, to me, that does not fear anything. And I do think that with the Rams, there's a little more volatility in how they think about game planning. Yeah, this line stinks, though. Like, for everything you just said, I didn't get why this line wasn't higher. It's like, shouldn't this line be at least four, maybe four and a half with Brady against Matthew Stafford in the playoffs? It's 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 a little bizarre to me. So I made this line three and a half. So, yeah, Chad, you're right. The, for me, the value is towards Tampa. Um I don't know what I'm going to do with this one yet. I got to like this one. This is the only game I don't really have a stance on because I'm just so in love with the Rams right now. Like I'm, I'm a little bit blinded by what they did last night. Like their D line going up against this Buccaneers team that might be down there. They're, they're almost all pro center. I think he made second team and a pro bowl left tackle. That's a big deal for this Buccaneers. That's a really good point that I forgot about. Right. Again, that's where I make my money, baby in the trenches. So it's like, as soon as I saw those injuries in the Eagles game, we kind of saw that they're, they're, they kind of turned that offense down. The Eagles have zero pass rush. They're one of the worst front four at rushing the, the QB in the football. And they got the time a decent amount in that game. Now you're giving me, you know, Von Miller. You're, get, you're giving me uh, Aaron Donald up the middle. It's, I'm, I'm just looking at this on a matchup basis of the books know what they're doing here. They're giving you a really soft line with this Buccaneers team. They're going to let the professionals kind of decide this line. I'll do the same. I, I I want to take the Rams. I'm just hoping the public will come on on the simple fact that it's Brady versus Matthew Stafford. You're getting good value on Brady. It's minus three. Bump that line up a bit. I'll take the three and a half. But this is the rare time where it's like, do I think Brady's going to lose this game? It's kind of the same with the Eagles. It's like I maybe can see him cover the number. I just can't see Brady losing. If you give the guy any type of time at the end of a game, he's the guy you want. He just is the guy that always can drive the field and get the points when it's needed. So. I'm, I'm hoping to get three and a half. Maybe I'll I'll change my view on Thursday and want to take the Rams money line. But as we said here today, I would just wait on this number and hope that you get a better number. Because to me, there is value in the three. But I think you'll get a better number once the week goes along. Well, look, we're down to one game here. And we haven't Foxhold or Simon Says. I mean, we can do that stuff. It's just tough because it's four games. My favorite bet right now is Tennessee. Like, but So then, number- then we got to Simon Says it. Because I also think that it's possible the number could go up. It's possible. So yeah, we can Simon Says that one. When Simon Says do it, when Simon Says do it, we do what Simon Says. Simon Says. Also because in the entire conversation, the only game that I felt compelled to immediately bet when we were talking about it was Tennessee. Yeah. There's only four games. It's a little like more magnified. I don't think we'll be in the foxhole until Thursday. It's very possible that we go into the foxhole on San Francisco. 100%. That's what, like, I just, like, that was that was going to be my favorite bet heading into this week because I just knew they were going to be undervalued against the Spring Bay team. But it, I just need to see what the deal is with Jimmy. We're not talking about the total on that because I don't think, I think the total is tied to sort of what we think of the side. Buffalo Bills at Kansas City Chiefs. Kansas City Chiefs, two-point favorites at home against the Buffalo Bills. And this line has dropped 97% of the money on the Buffalo Bills. 64% of the bets right now 
on the Kansas City Chiefs. You know, know. you make me want to shout. Two months ago, I promised our listeners I wouldn't play the Bill Shout song until they won a playoff game. Ha! So, <laughs> here we go. The Bills make me want to shout. Kick your heels up and shout. Throw your hands up and shout. Throw your head back and shout. Come on now, the Bills are making it happen now. Chad, you know what my deal is. I've said it three years. My rule of thumb in the playoffs is... If Mahomes is playing any other quarterback than Tom Brady, I always bet Patrick Mahomes. It has worked out swimmingly for me. I think the only time I haven't covered with him was that fucking Browns game where he got hurt and Chad Henney came in. They won. I don't think they covered that. Like, I, I'm trying to off the top of my head remember it, but I, I honestly think he's covered every single game I've ever bet on him in the playoffs, except when he plays against Tom Brady. He played against Tom Brady in the AFC Championship game. He lost to him. Played against Tom Brady in the Super Bowl. He lost to him. This ain't Tom Brady. It's Josh Allen. Josh Allen, do it, bro. Slay the beast. This is your second time around. It's really fucking hard to beat the same team twice in a year. That's why we see the divisional matchups. It's usually always split. Like, that's just, even when the teams aren't good, they usually split divisional matchups because it's so hard to beat a team twice in a year. The Bills, they've built their entire team for this Chiefs team. That's why, like, I've already talked to a couple pros. They're all in on the Bills. Like, that. That not shocking at all how much Chad just said all the money's coming on the Bills. This is exactly what this Bills team is built for. They lost to this Chiefs team last year. They've been thinking about it all offseason. That's why they smacked them when they played earlier this season. Do it. If you believe in the Bills, if you think this is the Bills year, this is it. Like the Bills win this game. Going into last, I would say last week, the only team I had Tennessee as an underdog against was the Chiefs at home. I make the Bills minus one now. They play Tennessee. They, I will have the Bills' favorite. So this is it. Like the Bills, they could be the best team of football right now. They have arguably the best offense, most complete defense. I mean, their team, their defense has been great all season. Yeah, you can say they played in the easy conference and who they really play. Even against good teams, their defense was really good. I just have to get it to this Chiefs team. They've just been here so many times. Chad just said that number is down to two. I cannot take it. I can't not take this number under three. So I made this minus three. I'm taking the value. Chad, he might be on the bills. Matt Mitchell, please don't hate me. It's just it's just business, my friend. How could I hate you for that? I only had one note. My only note was the Bills spent an entire offseason preparing themselves to play the Chiefs in the playoffs. You covered it already. They've designed every move to beat this team. That's exactly why they ran it up as much as they could in their last meeting. But it is very, very difficult to beat the same team a quality opponent on the road twice in the same year. I think Buffalo will win. I would, I bet my own money on that, but I'm, uh, I'm still riding the high of last week, which is probably the worst thing that could have happened in terms of this game is spend a whole week of everyone telling you, you are the perfect football team. Definitely not what Buffalo wants to hear. So I'm really banking on the shame and anger of last season. Still those fires still burning bright. And you hit it on the head too. That perfect game. I would love to if we could find something in Bet Labs. I'm definitely going to try to dive into it. Like, again, it's never happened before, so there's nothing to go off of that. But when's the last time a team played that flawless and then the following week just laid an egg? Because not that I remember the Bills doing it before, but it's like I feel like this happens in the playoffs where a team plays like that, where the Chiefs, they were pretty sloppy. I mean, they were down 7 nothing at Pittsburgh. All of a sudden, Mahomes turned it on. It was 21-7, to and it's like they needed that maybe. Maybe they need a little bit of hit in the mouth that woke them up where – like he just said, the Bills, hopefully they have that hunger because they're going to be feeling damn good all week. They literally played a flawless game. So uh, I, I feel like we're getting a good number based off that, like the, the public perception of they just played a flawless game. So uh, I'm interested to see what you got to do, Chad. You you on the Chiefs, you're on the Bills. The Chiefs have gotten better pretty much all season, and their offensive line has gotten better all season. Every single week, people are trying to explain why their offense hasn't been as explosive. Their offense was pretty fucking explosive this past week. Up against one of the best defenses in football. Against like a pass rush. Not a great rush, not a great rush defense, but a pass rush that is as good as it gets, right? They were top 10 against the pass. They may have threw for 400 yards. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, you know, who knows if they were holding some tricks in the bag for the playoffs and sort of waiting like, you know, in Rocky when he's fighting right-handed and then he unleashes the left hand. Um, or if it was just the way the matchups played out and Mahomes was scrambling and so artistic uh, in the pocket. But they looked really good, too. 
and they got a run game with McKinnon. I mean, that guy. Yeah. And whenever you see a player with the number one, fast. yeah, you just think he looks faster when they have the number one. And he really does look fast as shit. At the end of the day, it comes down to this. Patrick Mahomes is a generational talent. He's been in the past two Super Bowls, a MVP quarterback. He's better than Josh Allen. He's playing at home and he's favored by less than a field goal. Like, let's not overthink this, right? It, it, we had the same conversations last week about the Bengals and the Raiders. The Bengals are a better team, right? The, the Chiefs, even if everything is even, the Chiefs should be favored by three at home. Now they're favored by two. I want the Bills to win. I Me do. Too. I've got a big futures ticket on the Bills. I've got a big futures ticket on the, on the Packers. I love to see the two of them meet in the Super Bowl together. I will probably bet on the Chiefs if only to have a slight hedge on, on that futures, on that futures ticket. Yeah. Chiefs minus two. It's gotta be. Yeah. And I'm right there with you. It's just, again, the numbers, luckily the numbers do back it up, but even if they kind of went against it, I probably would just go against my own numbers. Cause what you just said, it's like, sometimes the numbers can't take into account how great Mahomes is. And we're going to get burned event. Like we'll lose games with Mahomes again, Brady, the greatest quarterback ever. What is it? Nine Super Bowls. He's been to 10 Super Bowls. It's like, We've never seen anything like it before. The odds of Mahomes duplicating it are probably less than 2%, but it's like, I maybe I'll fade him on the road next week against Tennessee when I'm getting a dog and getting a good number with Tennessee. But this week, like Chad just said, at home, we, the, he just does not lose there unless it's Tom Brady. So I, I, I'm going to be taking Mahomes as well as that with that too. This is the kind of game um, where I do think it'll probably play against type. The total is really high, 54 and a half. I'm actually on that over. What? I know. And like statistically, I usually would go on the under. I just, these two offenses, I just can't see either quarterback giving a damn what the score is. They're just going to be throwing the ball. So weather permitting, I think Stucky tweeted it out. It's like playoff total is this high or eight and one towards the under. The only over that's ever hit in the playoffs with above this number was the Chiefs versus the Bills. So I'm, I'm just looking at two offenses that, I love the OC of the Bills. I love Andy Reid and what he does with his offense. I mean, again, the, the end of the first quarter was 0-0 in that Chiefs game against the Pittsburgh and went over by like two touchdowns or like three touchdowns maybe. Like, you just can't – I just can't bet these unders in these Chiefs kind of games. So, I'll take an over in a matchup between two generational talents at quarterback. All right. Well, right now, you and I are both leaning towards favorites. Kansas City minus two, Tennessee minus three and a half. We're waiting to see what the wise guys do with the Bucks and the Rams. And if the if uh, we think it's a soft three and that the books will move it one way or the other. And if it gets to three and a half, we'll take the Rams. If it gets to two and a half, we'll take the Bucks. And then San Francisco, we like the Niners. We think six is a big number to take. We're a little worried about some rumors. So we're going to give it maybe another 24 hours or so before we fully dive in. But come Thursday, we'll have a lot more answers. When all hope is lost, all that's left is relief. Let's play Scooch Roulette. Scooch Roulette last week. I had the Bengals minus four and a half. You had the Niners plus three. There we go. I will give you first choice. I'm going to take the best number available. I'll take the Oh, my God. You're such a dick. (laughs) I just convinced you on the Chiefs, and now I'm taking the Titans. I'm taking the Titans minus three and a half. I do love the Titans. I just think you might be able to get a better number later in the week. So I know Chad likes to change his number. I'm an honorable guy. I always take oh, whatever number I get. Oh, fuck you. <laughs> but I'll take the best number available. I'll take the Chiefs. Even though I've seen one and a half at some books, um, I'll take the two. Do we think it's going to go down to one and a half? It might. I mean, all, again, it all depends on what pro groups are hitting it. Like, off the top of my head, I can think of throw, three different guys who have runners in Jersey have already hit this number. And, Chad, do you see the numbers coming out of New Jersey? Remember all that noise I heard about how much New York market was going to affect New Jersey's gambling? Changed nothing. Numbers are just the same. New York market, the past uh, eight days since it launched, has just been on fire. It's, yeah, it's, big. It's, it's big. It's I mean, it's bigger than Jersey, obviously, but I'm just saying people said Jersey's numbers were going to drop way off. The numbers were above what they were last year at this point. Gonna shock. It's going to shock people to hear this, but people like to bet. When they have the opportunity to bet, uh, from their couch on their phones, they're going to fire the fuck away, man. <laughs> they're going to be betting James Conner anytime touchdowns uh, as often as they possibly can. All right. 
I want to remind people to rate and review the podcast because, and you're going to give us a 10, uh, you're going to give us five stars. I don't give a shit what you say. You can be as mean as you want, be critical. Feedback is a gift. It is review time here uh, at the Action Network. I'll be using anything people say in these reviews in my reviews of both Matt Mitchell and Simon Hunter as employees of the Action Network. Here's a great review from Slop Mix. As a listener since the early days, I have to tip my hat to the success of the favorites. Creator Bob Scucci and prominent personality Tina had no idea what they were setting in motion when they launched the first iteration of this podcast. Fast forward a number of years and the cockpit is manned by super producer and Bills fan Matt Mitchell and the ever entertaining Simon Hunter. These guys share immense insight into the weekly state of the game. Even better, they make it fun. Occasional guest, Chad Hillman. Chad Hillman provides comic relief and a winning pick from time to time. Thank you, buddy. No lie spotted, just facts. Five stars. Hey, Slot Mix, please email podcasts at actionnetwork.com to claim your prize. Thank you for the kind words. I'll extend them to Chad Hillman. <laughs> this has been the favorite podcast from the Volume Podcast Network. Join us again on Thursday. We will dive deeper into the divisional playoff round. We'll get even more focused on the Niners and the Packers and the Bucks and the Rams. We'll update on what's happening with the Chiefs and the Bills and the Titans and the Bengals. We will get busy with our big balls bet of the week. For Simon Hunter, I am Chad Hillman. Until next time. Love you. Hey, what's going on, guys? I'm Mike Yam. And I'm Aditi Kinkabala. We love football so much, we figured let's start a podcast and call it NFL Explained, where we just answer all the crazy questions we get about football all the time. There are a ton of those questions, Aditi. We can go through team names, like how the Buffalo Bills got their name, or who even came up with the Sky Camp, because that is actually a really cool idea. <laughs> Answers to questions like that and more every Thursday. Come join us for the NFL Explained podcast. You can find it on the iHeartRadio app or on Apple Podcasts, basically wherever you find your podcasts. I'm Sam Rappaport, host of Earning It, a new podcast about women who are breaking the NFL's grass ceilings. I went to, to Darcy and said, look, I'd like to hire two coaches who happen to be female. This story will be told by NFL head coaches, owners, and of course, the women themselves. I even go in with Commissioner Roger Goodell. I didn't curse once, <laughs> did I? Listen to Earning It, the NFL's forward progress on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. I'm Colleen Wolf from Thursday Night Football and Good Morning Football Weekend. And I'm Ricky Hollywood from around the NFL and the broadcast. On our new podcast, Split Ends, Ricky and I will be coming to you every week to talk about all the important and unimportant storylines in the football world. Join us for the stories on and off the field that matter. And some don't, but we think they're interesting, so we're going to talk about them anyway. We'll break down games, news stories, tweets, interviews, whatever it takes to cover the ins and outs of the NFL world. We're here to talk you through it. Just a couple of best friends talking ball. Listen to Split Ends on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts.